Alrighty, I am gonna do, at least I'm gonna take another attempt at quelling. And I'm sure the purists out there are gonna say that's not even quelling, Dan, but whatever, I'm still in the idea. <laughs> so, here's what I'm thinking. I want it to be closer to a fishbowl shape than I've done in the past. I think my last time I tried this, actually, I, that was my original idea, but it didn't really get there. So just kind of a basic fishbowl shape. And then instead of having building off of peninsulas like I did in the wave bowl, or I'm sorry, the ocean bowl, I'm going to try having these be more of a cave look, kind of a geode look, and they're going to be totally random. So what I'm going to do is use all these colors of gray. It's kind of a gray-blue. We're going to go from light to dark, and they're just going to be very irregular shapes. And I'm going to start with the lighter color cut out strips and however long that is that'll be the maximum outside and then I'm just going to collapse it smaller and smaller. Yeah. I think I'm gonna like these color, this color pattern. It's kind of subdued, this um, color scheme here, but it's gonna be kind of interesting. So, let's go see if I can find a piece of wood. The name to be determined. I have no idea. I will save my sketches. I think it's kind of funny to have a huge stack of my projects here, and I like to keep that on top for the my references I'm working. Alright, giant willow tree rides again. Big, nasty, not too rotten. Chainsaw got it through there, but not too deep. Cracks are manageable. Boy, if that's not a perfect piece of wood for Dan Priest, there never was one. <laughs> Alright. It's possible that um, I shouldn't be doing woodworking with heavy equipment and power tools late at night. <laughs> Might not be the safest decision. If, um, if you watched my last project, it was called the Ember Bowl. I'm trying to look, make, um, a bowl looked like it was on fire with burning wood. I think I declared that over my dead, my dad's dead body, would I have another project that cracked or boiled or whatever. And um, that might have been a little premature. <laughs> so I thought I had figured out a way to cool off the resin without having to put it in a freezer and all this stuff, which many of you have kindly suggested. So my plan was to do, uh, to, to, well, first of all, I put my air compressor in my basement of my house, which is nice and cool most of the time. And I ran my air hoses up through to my garage. And then the idea there was to, circulate the air through the pressure pot 
um, as much as I could and still maintain the pressure and, and therefore drop the temperature of the resin. And on that last project, the ember project, they worked like a charm. And it was a pretty big pour. It was a big bowl, walls, probably three inches thick of resin. But the big difference was is that one was inside a bowl with the bowl inside it. And so there's a lot of air around the outside allowing for it to be cooled off. And so my plan actually worked really well. But on this project, as you will see, the, um, the problem is, is when I do my molds, I often use sand around it and it's packed in there tight and there's a whole lot of resin plus the wood and it's really well insulated. And so the heat really builds up and this sucker cracked like nobody's business. <laughs> I uh, was fortunate that it didn't bubble. You can get to a point where it just boils and you're, you know, that's, that's it. Cause it doesn't, you can't even finish that kind of surface. So I was actually lucky to walk away with anything on this project. Um, those chainsaw marks, I thought they were going to be a little more shallow than they were. Uh, in the end, I knew I was going to make some really big windows and cut out most of the wood, so it didn't really matter. But I ended up filling it in the end for uh, structural integrity, uh, which turned out to be a good idea. But anyway, so back to quilling. I, I like this look. I like this idea. I don't know if this actually qualifies as quilling. When I look at some of these amazing artists do their thing, they pack the paper in there really tight. So from a distance, it looks like it's been painted, you know. It's So I don't know, same vein, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But um, I like the appearance. I like the idea of the abstract form. Um, the, um, the wave bowl I did where I had similar issues with cracking. It's kind of the theme of my life. Um, I got the inspiration from the International Airport at Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, a couple of amazing artists. The, the entire um, main, I don't even know what you call it. It's not really a lobby. It's the main entryway, the main huge hallway. Um, has got this big quelling looking thing that's supposed to remind you of Southern Utah slot canyons and red rock formations, which I thought they did a brilliant job of. And every time I fly somewhere, I'm reminded how much I like that. And so this is my second attempt at trying to capture that kind of feel. Anyway, needless to say, before you offer any more awesome suggestions, I have in my possession a freezer <laughs> to put my pressure pot in and uh, that should do it. That should keep my resin at a temperature I need to. You know, from like late April, uh, let me back up. From November, late October to April here in Utah, it's cold enough in my garage. I don't even, doesn't matter. The resin, I can just leave it out. The pressure pot outside in the in my garage, and it's plenty cold. It usually sets up beautifully, but um, it's this summertime heat that we've had record heat here in Utah. It's now September 1st, and we're having 100 degree weather, which is really unusual. So hopefully the freezer does the trick. Um, I will keep you posted pictures on the next project. A couple of things I could have done a lot better on this project other than maintaining the resin at the right temperature so it didn't crack was um, making the holes a little deeper and not making my paper so tall. I, my initial idea here was to have the paper so tall on edge that I could just dunk this, or I just put this thing in a garbage bag, fill it full of resin and be fine, and the, the sander on the outside wouldn't collapse into the windows at all. I, you know, I thought it would keep it out. But unfortunately, I made some of my windows a lot bigger than my paper quilling, and the sand pushed the... Um, walls of the garbage bag into some of those windows. So you, as you'll see here, I had to back up and wrap it in a thicker foam covering anyway. And that worked out pretty well. One of them collapsed a little bit, so I had to take off more resin than I wanted. I was hoping to have really deep walls 
so that it would you kind of get lost in the in the quilling as it in its depth. Um, the walls ended up end up being a lot thinner because I had to get it, that depression out. But um, yeah, you know these projects. There's so many stages. There's so many steps to it that you inevitably change your design as you're going, and that's fine. You know, I I rarely end up with the thing I thought it was in the end, but. Sometimes that's a little frustrating. <laughs> I'd like to create what my design was, but I don't know. Part of it's discovering what I've actually made in the end. That's kind of a fun part of the creative process, I suppose. Uh, a couple of things about resin that I have figured. Early on, my biggest problem was bubbles. I don't have that problem anymore, and the process that's really worked for me is to run the resin through a vacuum chamber. This is a vacuum chamber pot here. Uh, for about an hour, just let it pull the bubbles out for a long hour. It never really stops fizzing, um, but that's a really important part. I like to use Thick Set Fathom Resin by Total Boat. It's a really long setting resin, takes a couple of days to really harden, which allows bubbles to rise. But one of the problems I was having early on as I was messing around with this uh, hobby was a little air pockets inside the wood, especially with mine where I'm doing these windows and different features inside the windows. You'd get little pockets that would trail air out. So you get this trailing bubbles that would solidify in the resin. And the pressure pot's fabulous because it squeezes little bubbles so you can't see them, but these little trailing air pockets leaking air, it wouldn't help with that. I always had that problem too. So I have discovered that if I put my whole pro project in resin and run it through the vacuum chamber, um, it, it forces the air out of the wood, which allows the resin to sink deep in there. And that's, that's solved that problem. So, so that's why I do both. I know there's a debate out there whether you should do pressure pot or vacuum chamber. And, I find that they both accomplish different things. The real test when you're doing resin is to do a thin sheet that you can see through, the light comes through. You'll see everything, every blemish, every little air bubble. And the pressure pot really helps get these micro bubbles out of there. So, so there's that. Quick shout out to all the artists who have donated so much to Art for OUR. Um, Bill Blaisdell and his awesome charcuterie and, and our ornamental boards. Um, my wife Annie's donated a lot of paintings. Some of that's my photography that from a trip this summer and the Wind Rivers. Uh, we've got, I think, 95. We're getting close to 100 artists who have donated stuff. And a large percentage of it goes to Operation Underground Railroad to fight child trafficking around the world. So good cause. Come, uh, come donate something. Come buy something. Make a donation. It's all for a good cause. One other uh, problem that I didn't really show because um, my pride wouldn't allow it <laughs> was this liner that I had, that metal liner that goes inside both the pressure pot and the pressure or the, the vacuum chamber and the pressure pot. I don't know why, but when this resin set, it expanded a little bit. Maybe it's because it overheated and I could not get it out. It bowed the inside of it and it was an impossible problem. So I had to cut a slit in it to get it out and that is no more. So I think I have learned all the lessons I need to learn. If the resin gods are listening, I am ready for a perfect project. <laughs> that's, that's next, the perfection. No, I really do think I've figured this out. I, there aren't any more variables that keep kicking my butt. I think that was the last one. You know, if I had a studio that was climate controlled, I wouldn't even have these issues, but... I will say this, and I know this sounds like a cop-out. Um, this The cracks in this thing kind of made it look pretty cool, in my humble opinion. For some reason, as I was finishing this, it kept reminding me of some ancient pottery that some archaeologist had found and pieced back together. And 
glued it back together. Um, so while I wasn't really happy with the outcome overall, um, as far as it strayed from my original plan, I don't hate this thing. I actually kind of like it. It's really grown on me. It's got a lot of defects, huge cracks, missing chunks of resin, but uh, that's where the name Ancient Chaos came from. I thought that was uh, pretty fitting for this thing. So it is what it is. If my own work can get a response out of me, I think that's art. Isn't that the, uh, the point of art, I suppose? So there you are. This multi-rest, I cannot sing its praises enough. Um, these wheels are pretty much skateboard type wheels, kind of a, a solid plastic, doesn't leave a mark on the project. And in, in a lot of my previous work, I didn't have one of these and I was always doing these big projects. And every time I got off center, my, my tenon bends a little bit, you know, as I'm cranking on this thing. and. You get one little catch when you're working way on the end and you bend your tenon and you gotta recut the whole thing. It's just a disaster. So this thing, this is awesome. Cannot sing its praises enough. And I am not gentle on my projects. I'm always turning projects that are off center and they're heavy. You know, I really put it through its paces and it's been awesome. Totally worth it. It's in the description of the video if you're interested in looking at one, but it's uh, it's really good. Because of the constant, all, all the cracks in that, this thing was um, pretty unstable, especially as I started hollowing it. So you'll see me stop and super glue it quite a lot. Um, that was mainly because the pieces were shifting and coming out a little bit. And kind of shocked the thing stayed together in the end, but a little bit of a risky piece for sure. Big uh, shout out to my awesome sponsors. I think the my most important one is Total Boat. Uh, they provide resin. Uh, it's this thick set fathom res resin that uh, allows me to do up to three inches depth. If you put your projects in a freezer and really keep it cold, you can go even deeper than that for sure, or thicker than that, depending on how you look at it. So those guys are amazing. They have donated thousands of dollars of resin and it's made our fundraising efforts for operation on the railroad far more successful. Trumi is another awesome one. My brother started this uh, smartphone company for kids. Um, he had keyed into the, the fact that kids often get extorted and there's a lot of problems, a lot of exposure to pornography and things that they really shouldn't be having access to. And so this phone allows parents to help them be exposed to things at the right time and, and have social media when you decide they're ready. Um, their phones are Android phones, which are high quality. And, you know, my son's got one, he's 13 and we loved it. And he's actually liked it. He, he doesn't complain. We used to have gab phones and they do a similar thing, but my son really likes this for a number of reasons, a little more functional and, and that. But anyway, Every time somebody signs up for a Trumi contract for their kid with their phone, uh, they'll donate 30 bucks to Operation Underground Railroad. So that's an awesome thing you can do. You can see the uh, link in the description. I like to shine a light through the far wall of the project when I'm working on these window type projects. 
um, you, you can quickly lose your subject or go too far. And this allows me to see when I've broken through and hollowed out all the way that I have to, but no, no more than necessary. This one was a bugger to finish. The uh, chips and cracks made for a lot of gaps and chattering with my equipment. Then uh, it turned out okay, but there's a lot of defects in it because of that. It was just just impossible to get it to a smooth finish. But I suppose that worked into the theme of the bowl in the end, which was uh, a little bit of chaos. Oh, I forgot one of my other um, partners, um, Bored Panda, has taken a lot of my videos and run with them on Facebook. Um, so if you see something for mine that looks familiar there, it might be me. But they've taken, I think, 10 of my videos and run with them, and they've helped us raise several thousand dollars for OUR, which is incredible. So thank you to Bored Panda. Overall, for Art for OUR has raised, I want to say we're really close to $75,000 since we started, which was a um, year and a half ago, give or take. So if you've been a part of that, if you're just watching this video, you're a part of that. You've helped us raise money. Everything I earn, all the sponsorships and everything, I donate to them. This is all a hobby for me and for a good cause, so... When you subscribe and watch videos, you're helping raise a little bit of money for a very important cause. That's freeing kids from trafficking around the world. So thank you very much. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, it's a pleasure. This is the eternal learning curve <laughs> with with Dan Priest. I should rename the channel that. Um, I think we figured it out. Next project, this is going to be absolute perfection. I'm actually pretty excited to show it to you. I'll just give you a hint. We're going to destroy a chessboard. All right, see you in the next one. Thanks, you guys. Much appreciated.